today's game is brought to you by Dodge Cars and Ram Tough Dodge Trucks, Dodge America's Revolution. By the Ask for Motor Oil, Pennzoil, protection worth asking for. And by Adolf Coors Company, Golden, Colorado, the best of the Rockies is yours. The Seattle Seahawks won the toss. They have elected to receive. So Chris Barr in his eighth season out of Penn State getting set to kick off to the combination of Zachary Dixon. There's Zachary on the left side of the screen and David Hughes on the right. And we're underway here at the Kingdom in Seattle. This is Dixon. Out to the 20. Penalty flags thrown as Zach Dixon in his fifth season out of Temple returns across the 20-yard line, a 21-yard return. The referee today is Jim Tunney, and we await the call. Jim Zorn with Kurt Warner and David Hughes in the Seattle backfield. Steve Largent sitting it out at the start. He was a questionable because of an knee injury. And may play later on, but Byron Walker gets the starting nod. And the offensive line of the Seattle Seahawks, anchored by the veteran center, Blair Bush. Illegal block above the waist, number 57, half the distance, 10 yards. So it is Shelton Robinson called for the illegal block. And the Seahawks back at their eight-yard line and going to work. Jim Zorn, who has played very well against the Raiders, he's thrown six touchdowns in six games against the Raider franchise. And this is Kurt Warner, the AFC's leading rusher with 531 yards. Kurt Warner stopped by Ted Hendricks. And Marv, you might mention Howie Long, Reggie Kinlaw, and Lyle Alzado, who are in there now, interchange with the other three, who are equally as uh, as able. And those two win the white letters are the fellows who are replaced by the five defensive backs when they play the nickel and sometimes six. And the Raiders secondary, Hayes, Watts, Davis, McElroy, pick up a five, second down and five, out of the 13. David Hughes, along with Kurt Warner, and this is Hughes. in his third season out of Boise State, averaging about three and a half per carry, picked up four. So the Seahawks are just short of a first down. Rod Martin on the stop. It's been a rough week for Kurt Warner. Has not been with the club throughout the week. He'd been home at Pineville, West Virginia because his grandmother died last Tuesday. Kurt was raised by his grandmother. And the funeral was yesterday. There was a question as to whether he would play today. I think there are very few who could change their uh, their viewpoint and, and all of their preparation into a, into a mental condition to make them as able as they normally would be. As Jim Zorn said earlier in the day, he says, I think he's one of the few that can. And Dan Dorning looking for the first down. They're calling for the yardsticks. Ted Hendricks was there to make the stop. No game. So Dorning is stopped. And the Seahawks are forced upon head coach Chuck Knox, who did not appreciate the officiating last week in the game against San Diego. Seahawks penalized 15 times, the Chargers only <laughs> twice. Yeah, that's too many. I, mean, I tell you, I don't know a head coach that would say that's okay. Actually, they were hit with 17 penalties, two were declined. Here's Jeff West, and he just did get it all. Rick Pruitt on the fair catch, and let's see if they call it contact. Contact, but I think he was knocked into him, and uh, so there will be no flag thrown, no penalty incurred. First and ten, at least they have excellent field position. You can see Otis McKinney is really the man that uh, made contact with the man coming down the field. So well done, Jeff West, who gets uh, excellent hang time that time with a 31 yard punt. But here are the Raiders in terrific field position as they open up at the Seattle 47 yard line. Calvin Muhammad to the left, starting in place of Cliff Branch, who injured his hamstring with that sensational touchdown pass play against the Redskins. And Jim Plunkett. 
clears the middle, and he has the tight end, Todd Christensen. Keith Butler, inside linebacker on the right, along with Shelton Robinson making the stop. Marcus Allen and Frank Hawkins at the running backs. Kenny King is out with a bruised knee. And the receivers, Muhammad along with Malcolm Barnwell, and one of Plunkett's favorites, the tight end, Christensen. Offensive line. Dave Dalby, the center, in his 12th year out of UCLA. Hannah Marvin at the guards and Davis and Lawrence at the tackles. Pick up a five, second down and five. Two minutes gone by. First quarter, no score. And here's Allen. To the 39-yard line. So a three-yard advance. Tuya Sosopo and Bryant combining on the stop three number one draft choices. Now, when you have your defense, you'd love to build them against three outstanding defensive linemen. They've got three in Seattle. It makes the job a lot easier for the linebackers, but they've been hurt in that position. They have had a couple of entries, and the backups are a question mark. Very young behind the starters. Kenny Easley is supposed to be healthy again, Mark, so number 45 should be a factor. And here's a third down and two. You know, sometimes they say, let's take it up the middle. That is that is a perfect dissection. I don't think I've ever seen a play that went so much up the middle. Take a look. Number 50, Dave Dalby, the center. Here comes Frank Hawkins, runs right up over the top of the ball. Dalby cleared out some running room. They've got a first and 10. 11-yard pickup for Hawkins, who has played very well. First in filling in for Marcus Allen against the Redskins when Allen was out with the bruised tip. And today starting for the injured Kenny King. First down at the 28. That is Muhammad in motion. Marcus Allen not able to hang on. Plunk made a pretty good throw right there trying to get to Marcus Allen. In the films, it's been shown that Seattle has deep drops. But this is the kind of play that Plunk's trying to take. He's trying to take uh, advantage of Jacob Green's great mobility. Jacob, number 79, is a left end. On that play, he was just long gone, no factor for Plunk. And he didn't have much room to throw the ball. But you'll see him roll out if he can, when he can. And Jim is coming off an uneven performance. You look at the stats, 15 of 28 against Kansas City. but. Not a good one last week. Allen on the sweep. Marcus Allen right near the first down marker. 77, Jeff Bryant able to make the stop. A nine-yard pickup for Marcus, who says he wants to handle the ball more frequently. He feels well, the Raiders aren't giving it to him frequently enough. Well, I tell you what, the Raiders didn't give it to him as much as they could in the last couple ball games. Remember, he didn't, he didn't really play against the Redskins, okay? So Plunkett had to throw the ball some. Now, last week, they would like to have given him the ball more, but they're down 21 to 7. You know, they're a couple, couple touchdowns back. And uh, when you're a couple down, it's the quarterback's turn to throw the ball around the infield. So they couldn't do the things they like to do offensively, and Marcus doesn't get to carry it as much. So the former high school quarterback uh, completed two passes. I know. Maybe they should have played him quarterback. <laughs> All right, here is <laughs> you talk about your plays that are wide open. Those are the things you find in the films. You get into a certain situation, like inside the 15-yard line. They had discussed it earlier. We didn't know when it was going to happen. Any sort of a pitch, they've got Todd Christensen, who is playing tight end on the other side with two tight ends. He makes his block down the field. Looks like a simple little running play. All the, all the linemen going to the left wide open and Marcus Allen has a good throwing motion. He threw a touchdown last week completed another pass and he's done it again here and the crowd is stunned as Chris Barr adds the extra point. Marcus Allen with his second touchdown pass within the last two games and with four and a half gone by first quarter the Raiders with the early lead. Shoots out off the line of scrimmage, falls down on his knees. When he does so, Kenny easily gets into the flow of the play, figures Christensen is no longer a factor. He gets up, and he's standing all alone. That's what you call fooling a defensive back. And Todd Christensen with his fifth touchdown reception of the season. The kickoff by Barr. And Zachary Dixon back at his goal line. Good acceleration by Dixon. 
return out to the 25-yard line. Rick Burns on the stop. They call it a 24-yard kickoff return. So the Seahawks with a first and 10 at their 25. Jim Zorn, eighth year out of California Poly in Pomona, 30 years old. And under Chuck Knox, he has played four under control, which had been one of his problems in the past. Exciting quarterback, but he has he hurt. They've, they've really asked him to do a lot less. And he said, you know what I think the big difference between our offense right now and, and our offense in the past is we've got six or seven plays that we call our personality. And we're going to run them against whoever we play week in and week out. And he says, we haven't done that in the past. We've gone from pillar to post. And that's one of the plays they'll be running all day long, no matter what defense is put in front of them. Three-yard advance for Kurt Warner. Richard Todd had a nightmare. Intercepted five times as Miami walloped the Jets 32 to 14. And Pittsburgh winning big over Cleveland in the fourth quarter. No bargain for Brian Seif. And the 49ers slipped it to him 32-13, scoring 26 points in the second half. Second down, and they call it six. And again, it's Warner. Nice move as he went outside. Oh, oh. Well, excuse me. <laughs> I, I think he answered all the questions about whether or not he's ready. What they do is Ray Prohaska, the offensive coordinator of the Seahawks, when he gets into an offensive structure, he is the line coach and the coordinator. He's got those five offensive linemen doing things to allow backs to get free. You don't see, you don't see room to run like that for I don't care who the back is unless your coordinator is well structured. And they are. And Kurt picked up the first down out of the 36-yard line, five and a half minutes in. First quarter, Raiders lead it 7 0. This is Hughes. Quick opener. David Hughes, five yard gain. Rod Martin, number 53 on the tackle. San Diego doing it. I should say New England doing it to San Diego. A comfort behind effort by the Patriots. Well, you know, so many people were concerned with San Diego as we noticed Minnesota gives it to Houston there in the league doormat. Doesn't matter who the coach is, it's still not a, not a strong group. And Detroit has come from behind. St. Louis beating Tampa Bay. Buffalo over Baltimore in the third. And that sums it up, kid. Seattle yet to throw. Second down and five. And again to the... What do you do if you're a team like Seattle? They can cause the Raiders a problem. The Raiders have a great pass rush, okay? They've, they've sacked quarterbacks for more yarders than any other team in the game. But when you have a running back that is this explosive, it really tends to keep the defensive linemen and linebackers at home. And Kurt Warner is not just another good back. He's an offense in himself. That's one reason it allows Zorn to take not as much of the responsibility. 25 yards, four carries for Kurt Warner. First down at the 50. Zorn looking to throw for the first time. And he picked up two on the play. Ted Hendricks able to tackle Zorn, who could not find a receiver. His favorite receiver, Steve Largent, sitting it out right now, injured his knee last week against San Diego and did not practice at all during the week. I don't think the practice would be the factor. I'm sure it's the condition of his knee because when he came out here to run, he is one of the brightest wide receivers that's ever played this game. He can sit and dissect the defense in about five minutes. It's not going to take him a lot of practice time to get used to each other. So I think it's just his knee, and I doubt if we'll see much of it. Second down play. Look out. Penalty marker down. Martin on the stop. You saw the jumping. And it is offside. Called on the Raiders. Well, listen, the Raiders know. They're trying to get off on the ball at the right time. They know they've got a problem handling this man. Number 28, little sidestep, different direction. Rod Martin gets on it, but when you start before the ball snapped, it's a offside. bit easier. 53, five yards. So it is Martin 
who is having an outstanding season, leads the club in tackles. There's a final New England over San Diego, 37-21. They cannot play without defense. They do not have one. Second down and two. the strong safety number 36 along with Rod Martin on the stop Hughes did break one tackle but could not accelerate and so the Seahawks are short of the first down David Hughes a second round draft pick back in 81 born in Honolulu Hawaii but grew up in Kirkland Washington so he's playing for his hometown team there are a lot of fellas from the area and uh, you know, a couple from Oregon State one from Gonzaga. They've had a lot from around the area. A lot of good players. Take uh, Dornick from Washington State. He's a local fella. You just saw the tight end Metzelars in motion. Here's Warner. <laughs> Reggie McKenzie must feel like he just uh, died and went to heaven. I mean, he goes from O.J. Simpson to Kurt Warner. I wouldn't say they're dropping a lot. Take a look. When you get a running back as good as Kurt Warner is, what you do is you try to get somebody at the point of attack. If it takes two blockers to get one defender, get him on the ground, and the running back will find some room on his own. This time is exactly what happened. The two fellas on the right side, Steve August, is having a wonderful time playing tackle for the for the Seahawks now, and uh, 28's making them love it. He picked up 10, first down at the Raider 32. Sean Intended receiver was Paul Johns, Ted Watts. There's Watts covering on the play. Well, Howie Long got in there very quick on that play. Howie Long is playing excellent defensive line play for the Raiders right now. But let's take a look at why the pass was not able to be completed. See Rod Martin, number 53, just underneath 85. It always looks like you've overthrown your receiver, but it's the linebacker who gets in the path and doesn't allow you to complete the ball that's responsible for the defensive play. Second down and 10 as they come out of the eye. Walker in motion. Straight ahead. Kurt Warner to the 30. Short pickup, Van McElroy, free safety. On the stop, that's McElroy helping Warner up. You know, those the Marcus Allens and the, and the Kurt Warners, and you look around the league, the Wendell Tylers, it looks like every time they're brought down, it's the last guy that brings them down, and he was lucky to get them. Uh, it's just like Hugh McElhaney 25, 30 years ago. Every time he got the ball, the whole stand stood up, and this guy has the same effect. Well, the Rams trailing Atlanta. Could be bad news for Dallas. They got off to an early lead. That's right. <laughs> they have never done that. Tenth play of the drive. And Dorning for the first down. So Dorning out of the backfield. <laughs> and he's picked it up. Hey, I'd like to find... Uh-oh. They're throwing him a little penalty. And don't think penalties don't carry over. Moods carry over. 15-2 to two last week. Now they get penalized when they think they've continued their drive, picked up a first down. Charlie Sumner said before the game, if I see number 33 catch a third down pass for a first down, I'm liable to jump up there in the booth with you because they, he's the only man they throw to. Well, apparently, they were calling for the yardsticks. Uh, and I see. The uh, crowd reacted because they thought it was a clear cut first down, and it was a question of where the ball was spotted, and it is. Uh, first down picked up by Seattle at the 22. And Jim Zorn has got over the 20,000-yard uh, mark for his career. And it didn't take him long. He needed six yards coming in. Water stopped at the 20. Alcedo and Millen combined on the tackle, a three-yard advance. Seattle Seahawks come in at three up, three down last week, losing in San Diego, 28-21 after leading 21 zip. Marv, I think, you know, what should be mentioned as you see that statistic, it's how long did it take him to do it, and he's been in this game for eight years. This is his eighth year. That's over 2,500 yards a season. And there's a good chance that before he's through, he'll have as many as uh, 40,000, and there's only one man that's ever done that. Second down and seven. And again, Warner 
creating the additional yardage. Bob Nelson on the stop. It appeared that water would be trapped, but able to pick up three. Boy, it makes you feel a little bit helpless out there playing defenses. Now, McElroy's an excellent defensive back. Number 26, he barely touched him, let alone tackled him. So when you're out there all alone as a safety man trying to make the force, and you have a running back like Warner, you are you're, you have your hands full. It's a third down and four at the 16. He sends both backs wide. They have no linebackers in the area to handle the play because they're both man-to-man -man on the on the running backs. So when these defensive backs get on the wide receivers, he sees nothing to do. He gets it down to the one foot line. And first and goal. It's water. And he has stopped short. He tried to knife his way in. Whenever you start Whenever you start trying to back in, <laughs> there's a good chance you will not get there. It will be a second and goal. Two minutes, 23 seconds remaining. First quarter, Raiders lead 7-0. On the option, it was Marcus Allen connecting with the tight end Todd Christensen. 19-yard pass play. So Allen, who threw a touchdown last week, has done it again here. And you see the final scores, Detroit over Chicago. 15th play of this sustained drive. Second and goal. touchdown against the Raider defense. This is the most impressive drive I've seen against that defense all year long. And here's Norm Johnson with Jim Zorn holding. And we are tied at seven. A Seattle drive that took eight minutes and 20 seconds concluding with Dorning taking it over for his second touchdown of the season. Seguin, Texas, and Milwaukee. Plays 75 yards. Dorning took it in. We're tied at seven. Just under two minutes remaining in this first quarter. And the kickoff by Norm Johnson, a boomer. And Seattle's kickoff coverage leading the National Football League last season. Excellent again this year. But a penalty marker has been tossed, and we'll pick up that penalty right after we break for this timeout. Introducing the long... We're taking a look at uh, Tom Flores, who is a bit concerned, and Sam Bogosian standing on his right. has been the offensive line coach for several years with the Raiders. He knows he's got some He's got some outstanding offensive line. The most bar, the number one draft pick, and Shelby Jordan are sitting on the bench. He said, man, uh, <laughs> he said it's hard to keep those two fellas there. Very attractive backup uh, situation. And you have a versatile guy in Steve Sylvester backing up uh, the center and uh, at the guards. Don Mosbar, number one draft pick out of University of Southern Cal, and Shelby Jordan acquired, along with Don Hasselbeck several weeks back right. from the Patriots. You know, we, we take a look at Chuck Knox with uh, Keith Butler, the linebacker from Memphis State, who's been here for quite a while and is now noticing some of the changes. 
When Chuck Knox stepped in here, he took charge, and he brought his two jewels, uh, Prihaska and Catlin, to, to coordinate the other sides of the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you what he did. It's really, I said, hey, what, what, what's happening? He says, well, they've been ready around here. They could, they've been ready to win here for a long time. And he says, you know, they weren't prepared to win. He says, you can be as ready as you want. He said, uh, but unless you're prepared, he said, it doesn't do you much good. He said he, he got lucky, and he feels like he's got five acquisitions as we watch them step it back to the 20. Correction on the enforcement of the penalty. Information, the ball was in the air while the foul occurred. The penalty is from the kickoff spot. Seattle has declined the penalty. Los Angeles takes the ball at the 20-yard line, first and 10. Oh, I see. So it's like from, from where the ball was kicked. They certainly don't want it to go back there, so. <laughs> Of a, that's a weird rule, Marv. I mean, if you're going to enforce something, you should give the you should give the team that has been imposed upon the benefit the best idea, the best deal, and that certainly no wasn't it there. That's a flaw. Yeah. And the rule, it'll be changed. All right, first down at the 20, and here's Allen. Game tackled after the short pickup. Bruce Schultz, the outside linebacker, on the left. Leading the charge, Schultz, second year out of Texas. So Allen picked up a couple. It'll be a second down at eight. Pittsburgh walloping Cleveland now, 44-17. And Buffalo leading Baltimore, 30 to seven. And Buffalo four. is coming on and it looks like they may be the class in the AFC East. Kay Stevenson has done a job. And the Eagles taking the lead on Dallas. Play action, the bullet. Played by Christensen for a first down. Kerry Justin in on the tackle along with Michael Jackson, the outside linebacker. So a 10-yard pass play, and Todd Christensen, who caught the touchdown for Marcus Allen in the uh, earlier first quarter with his second reception of the day. They'll make it third reception. You can see that uh, Plunkett feels that he can get to Christensen a little more this afternoon than he's been able to in the last couple of games. He threw to him a lot early in the season, really laid off him the last couple weeks uh, for whatever reason, and he's come to him uh, three times already today. Michael Jackson of Seattle shake it up. Hurt his leg somewhere. And a timeout is called with 44 seconds remaining in this first quarter. First down at the 33. Malcolm Barnwell not able to hang on was covered by Kerry Justin. You, take, you can always, you can quiet down the wave if you make a reception. We'll take a look at Jacob Green. Here is a number one defensive lineman for the Seahawks, one of the premier in the game. Henry Lawrence is doing a job on him so far. If he doesn't get to Plunkett, Plunkett will have a field day. Jacob Green's specialty is getting the quarterback, holds the Seattle team record. He had 12 sacks two years ago. Second down and 10. 30 seconds left. First quarter. We're tied at seven. Look at throwing the ball from a hover. And that will be pass interference as Mohammed was tripped up by the strong safety Kent Easley. And Calvin Mohammed, although he got the penalty in his favor, is limping, and remember, Cliff Branch is also out of this ball game. Without a deep threat, the Raiders' personality would be cut to nil. Now that was Kenny Easley who could not come back. It looks like he got tripped up on Mohammed. Just he saw the ball short, was trying to do something about it, could not. Got caught for a, for an interference. But I tell you what, I'd rather have the ball back at the line of scrimmage with a healthy Mohammed than uh, have a penalty with nobody to throw to. 50-yard penalty. So that cost the Seahawks. Doki Williams, who caught a touchdown last week. In fact, it was Marcus Allen and Bruno Williams has replaced Muhammad. Hawkins for Hawkins. If they call it a completion and a fumble, it may be Seahawk ball. It was Butler who covered up. And that's the call. Keith Butler on the recovery. And Seattle 
takes possession with 12 seconds left, first quarter. Marv, you asked me early in the ball game, will being ahead 21 to nothing and losing the football game affect the Seahawks negatively? We mentioned, just take a look at the hitting. These guys are having to go at one another. They have been since the opening game uh, started. When you play against the Raiders, you know it's going to be a long afternoon if you don't start forcing the action. The Seahawks have forced it from the get-go, and they've got they've got a turnover at seven to seven, and uh, the Kingdom has come to life. Seattle first down at their 14-yard line. That is some statistic: ten touchdowns out of 20 turnovers. Seattle, an opportunistic ball club. To the 18 yard line. You'd say that must be rare for the Raiders to give the ball up. Well, they've had 22 turnovers in six games and are still five and one. That shows you how good their defense has played and has carried their football team for the, through the early part of the season. But the Seattle Seahawks are taking it to them now. This is the wrong time to find out you don't have the right insurance. Michael Jackson suffered a slight injury to the uh, right knee and should return, sitting it out right now. It'll be a second down and six at the 18-yard line. As we get underway, second quarter, Marv Albert, John Brody from Seattle, Washington. Kurt Water did not make the turn. That was cut off by Ted Watts. Yeah, there, there was a very small road leading to that at down the field that time. But you take a look. This is a real matchup. You've got an offensive line that's allowed the least sacks in the game. They, they, they move across the line, giving Warner a chance to run with the ball also. Against the team, the Raiders have, have sacked quarterbacks for more uh, yardage than any team in the league, and they're still playing the run this aggressively. It's a very well-rounded offensive unit and defensive. Look at the uh, statistics in the first quarter. Seahawks control the football for over 10 minutes. We're tied at seven. Sword out of the shotgun. Oh, good hit. Hard hit by Lester Hayes all over Dan Dorning. <laughs> well, I tell you what, when number 33 comes out of the backfield and it's third down, Everybody in the house knows Zorn would like to throw the ball to him. Now, Lester Hayes is no fool. He stands back there on his man, but he sees he sees Zorn. And as soon as he comes off the Dornick, he's going to make him make him feel it. No reception there. And the punting team has come on. Jeff West, eighth year out of Cincinnati, back at his five yard line. Rick Pruitt is back. West usually gets the good hang time. Here's Pruitt, and apparently called for the fair catch. That time did not get the hang time. A 35-yard punt, and a timeout is called. When we return, it'll be the Raiders to the offense. The first and 10 at the 46 for the Los Angeles Raiders. That's Barnwell peeling off. The short setup, the tight end Christensen again. Kerry Justin, who has replaced Keith Simpson at left quarterback, and on the tackle along with John Harris. It's been a rough year for Simpson, and Chuck Knox going with Justin. Well, I mean, you know, Keith Simpson is a first draft choice. He's a fellow they've, they've counted on a lot. He's had a couple good years up here for some unexplained reason. He hasn't played up to his ability level. And I tell you, it couldn't happen at a better time for Plunkett because wide, Mohammed and, uh, and Branch being hurt, they've got to throw to Christensen. Here's Marcus Allen. And another Raider first down. And Keith let, Butler on the tackle. And let number 32 run more. You know, <laughs> his idea is give me the ball and you won't be sorry. Well, your offensive line has to play well for him to do well also. And last week they didn't have a good game for them. It looks like they're moving people off the line of scrimmage a little better early in this ball game. And that's the result when they do. Yes, the Raiders were very upset about the play of the offensive line last week as they just did beat Kansas City 21-20 and had a cut from behind to do it. They were down 14-0. First down at the 28. Play action. And uh, Pluckett 
And a play that I don't think he had in mind oh, ended up no, running with the ball. No way he did. But I'll tell you what a guy does over the years. You get smart. I mean, Jeff, how many times have you seen a quarterback try to hand the ball off and the back's already gone? But after a while, you say, wait, I'll tell you what, if I don't hand it off, I'm going to follow him because he's going where the most blocking is. And so it didn't take him long. It's almost a reaction. As soon as he missed the handoff, hey, I'll get in and join him. Let's see what I can pick up. He picked up three yards, and that's pretty good. You quarterbacks are so rational. No, I didn't do that. I, I sat down, put one knee on the ground, said, let's go back and try again. I didn't want to point that out. But here's Allen. And Marcus near the uh, first down marker. Looked like he picked up five. Michael Jackson, who is apparently all right, in on the stop. Missed a couple of plays because of that knee injury, but he's fine, and they are just short of the first down. Two and a half minutes gone by in the second quarter. We're tied at seven. Here's Jackson, fifth year out of the University of Washington. He recovered a fumble last week that led to a Seattle touchdown. Third down and one. First down, Frank Hawkins, who has seen much action in the last two games because of injuries to Marcus Allen and Kenny King. King sitting it out today. And Hawkins, in his third season out of Nevada, Reno, has collected the first down. Los Angeles Raiders, record of 5-1. and one. The only loss that stirring game at RFK in Washington two weeks ago, Redskins coming from behind to win it 37-35. Jackson. I'll tell you what, not too tricky a play, really. Michael Jackson has Marcus Allen in motion. He realizes nobody's on me, folks. Plunkett's got his back turned. He just took off rather than go into his area. They've got a few blitzes designed to get Plunkett. I'm sure one of them is when Marcus is in motion. From his offside, nobody. Nobody is there. John Han is, or uh, Charlie Han is trying to make a play to get outside to try and pick up Jackson, but he's got no case. That's a loss of 10 yards. Michael Jackson, a guy who has moved back to the outside. He was out of place as a middle linebacker last year. And Knox has gone to a 3-4, and it's helped Jackson. And the crowd reacted to the defensive work of the Seahawks. Jeff Bryant with the reps on Marcus Allen. You know, a lot of people have been questioning uh, uh, Easley. Now, Easley being as fine a player as he as he you know has been for the last couple of years. Kenny was ab absolutely a dominating safety man. Well, the first four or five games of the year, he hasn't been. I asked Chuck Knox. He said, you know, the problem is this is the first game he's been healthy. And I've noticed him coming up late uh, three or four times. If he gets there on time, it's tough news for the back. There you see third down and 20. Marcus inside the 15, but short of the first down. John Harris and Ken Easley combine on the tackle. Here is a situation. It's almost a give, a give up. What, what kind of play is there when he's got 25 to pick up? We see, we see Marcus Allen running as far as he can. You can see Plunkett back there rooting for him in the background. But they still have to kick a field goal. And this attempt from 32 yards out. Mark Wilson will hold Chris Barr, who is four for eight on the season. He has connected two of his last three. And he connects right here. So far from 32. And the Raiders now lead the Seahawks by the score of 10 to 7. Chris Barr and the Raiders leading the Seahawks 10-7. If there's one thing I've never seen the Raiders do, it's hide. That is true. <laughs> and here's David Hughes. Beautiful move by Hughes. Flag down. Doki Williams pushed him out of bounds. The return by David Hughes. But there is a penalty marker down. Number 88 was back there about the 30-yard line, and he and uh, one of the Raiders
commentators were having a little discussion. That's where the flag was thrown. against the Seahawks. Referee Jim Tunney working along with umpire John Lineback, head linesman Sid Seaman, line judge Boy Smith, the back judge Pat Knight. Illegal block below the waist during the run back, number 88, 15 yards, first down. And it is, as you mentioned, uh, Pete Metzelar is continuing the official rundown, side judge Gil Mace. And the field judge, Johnny Greer. So the ball back at the 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Seahawks, who have been very effective on first down plays, uh, particularly proficient last week against the Chargers. Dan Dorning. Archie Reese on the stop. Quick check of the scoreboard around the NFL. Miami clobbering the Jets at Shea Stadium. Pittsburgh walloping Cleveland. San Francisco winning big over New Orleans, pulling away late. New England over San Diego. Minnesota, a lot of big scores. Minnesota That's been a close Houston. game all day. Another one. Detroit over Chicago, 31-17. A high-scoring close game. St. Louis beating Tampa Bay. Continuing the scoreboard rundown, Buffalo leading Baltimore in the fourth quarter. And now Dallas in front of Philadelphia as they have jockeyed in the first quarter. How do you think they'll handle a lead? I, I think they prefer to have uh, the opposition where they want them, and that is trailing as late <laughs> in the game as possible. Kansas City leading the uh, Giants in KC, 3-zip. At the 27. And here's Zorn. And he is right at the first down marker. Depends where they spotted Bob Nelson. He's got he's got a he's got a first down because they started at the 20. You remember that? And uh, now Reggie McKenzie makes a fine play, but he trips on his he trips on his heel just as he's got a play on Nelson, or he'd have picked up 10, 15 more. So Zorn has run well in this first half, and it's a first down. Jim Zorn has picked up 22 yards, three carries at important times. That's Chuck Knox looking for consistency out of number 10. Jim Zorn, a quarterback who has been exciting, but up and down, erratic, but has big playability. Off the play action. A pattern that Jim Zorn, when he's hot, will hit nine out of ten times. But he started fast in the early in the year. In the last couple of ball games, he hasn't thrown the sidelines as well as you'd expect Jim Zorn to throw them. He can throw the sidelines. He's got a strong arm, and for whatever reason, you get just a little out of sync. You start throwing the ball a little before the receiver comes out of his move. For whatever reason, they haven't been as effective in the last couple of ball games. I don't know whether it's Largent being out of there or what. He was looking for Byron Walker, the man who has replaced Largent. Steve sitting it out with a knee. Zorn is now one for three, eight yards. That's been it. Seahawks have been very effective on the ground. Here's Kurt Warner. Oh, my God. A brilliant move on Lester Hayes. <laughs> Lester Hayes is looking. It's like, I know he was here. When? Where did he go? All right, second, ten. You see Hendricks is trying to do what he can. He did touch him. If they start playing two-handed touch, he'll be, a, he'll be a lot easier to get down. And the crowd reacting with the uh, replay put up on the big screen here at the Kingdom. But it's a third down and five for Seattle. We're second quarter, seven minutes remaining. Raiders lead at 10-7. certain it's holding because uh, Jim Zorn never went down if it wasn't roughing the passer and it wasn't got to be holding and 
that is the call against Seattle. Holding right guard decline fourth down. Aren't the right guard is Robert Pratt. They're going to need to throw the ball more sharply than they have early in the ball game, and Knox knows it. He's running. Uh, Warner's doing his job, but the receivers and the quarterback uh, have been given enough time. They're going to have to do theirs. There's the punt. Oh! A penalty marker pulled down as Brett Pruitt was walloped. They may rule that they did not give him a fair opportunity to catch that punt. It was very well timed, but I don't think he gave him quite enough room. You can, well, I don't know. No, I, they only get one look at it. Pruitt, who has had two sensational days in a row returning punts, they know they better not give him much room. That's Dave Brown. Perfectly timed, it appeared. Let's see what the, the officials say. Dave Brown getting downfield very quickly. And what they're doing right now is conferring. Because I think that penalty was thrown because they didn't think he gave him enough room. But in the replay, you can see a lot of the officials might have seen it differently, and they're taking another look. They want to get away from the action, make a decision collectively, and I think that's been an improvement throughout the league in the past couple of years. But they do on occasion change calls. First reaction in watching it develop live was that there was not enough time and I look at the replay I think uh, was a perfectly timed move right. by Brown let's see they didn't have that benefit though illegal use of the hands during the punt by the receiving team the ball is recovered by Seattle the penalty is declined so it was according to the officials Perfect timing by Brown, the call on the Raiders. I think the whole commotion was the fact that they had not clarified what the call was. Everybody went around missed the motion, and uh, they assumed that he didn't give him enough room, as we did up here. And that wasn't the call at all. It was declined. Number 37, Eric Lane recovered, and it's first and 10 Seahawks. So Eric Lane, the backup running back, the recovery and the Seahawks first down at the Raider 24 yard line. Water. He is exciting. It just looks like so often now all these great running backs that are coming out of college. You wonder why Penn State started off the season so slowly. Maybe they didn't realize just how good this fellow was and how much they had lost. But he has come on, he and Dickerson and Marcus Allen, the great running backs right now, provide a dimension that I don't think we've seen in this game as we see it today. Picked up eight yards, stopped by Reese and Millett. Second out and two at the 16. The lone deep back is Water. Looking for the first down that time, Hendricks <laughs> right there. Don't let him get both hands on you there, fella, though, or you will go nowhere. under six minutes remaining in this first half. He doesn't take to embarrassment lightly. And a couple plays ago, he got embarrassed a little bit. This time he manhandles the tackle, does the same thing with the ball carrier. Ted Hendricks, who goes six foot seven and 235 pounds. He came up with that big play last week, uh, blocking the field goal attempt of Nick Lowry that would have won it for Kansas City. Third down and three. And Dornick should have had it. Same man, third down. How many times have they gone to Dornick? Every time, every ball that's been thrown in the third down situation has been thrown to Dan Dornick. One was completed, one was deflected, and that one was dropped. Now, you don't see number 33 do that very often. in his second season out of UCLA. He has been the hottest field goal kicker in the National Football League. And this is a 35-yard attempt. Oh! And Zorn chases 
chasing it down. Going to try to throw it. That's good. That looks like one out of the Seahawks playbook from several years ago. Would have been fine, but he should have dropped the ball. I know it's hard to ask a receiver to drop a pass, but when Zorn was in trouble, he was just trying to find anybody out there that he could get rid of the ball to, that they could get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. He did find Dornick, and he made a pretty good play out of it, but they had no case once that center was over his head. Channel 5. Sellout crowd, Kingdo, Seattle, Washington, Marv Albert, along with John Brody. Raiders leading the Seahawks 10-7, 5-13 left. In this first half, and another look at the high snap from the uh, center, Blair Bush. And do you know Jim Zorn is back under the 20,000 uh, yardage mark off you know, this pass? It's a loss on the play. Well, sometimes you assume that the, you know if the if the holder's real alert, he can jump up in the air and save it. That baby was about eight feet high. He had no chance to do so. He is minus yardage on the day. He's down to 19,987. He came in only <laughs> six yards short of of 20,000. All right, first down at the 32-yard line. Raiders operate with Plunkett at quarterback. Play action for Allen, and Plunkett puts it up. It is picked up. Kerry Justin off the pass and tell for Calvin Muhammad. Kerry Justin in a sixth year out of Oregon State. The reason the fans are all so excited, they follow football pretty closely. Now, this is a man that's starting a ball game for the first time this year. He's coming in, playing cornerback, trying to handle Mohammed all by himself. He does so. Beautiful interception. In his first start, he picks off an interception, and they've got it, they've got the ball back. Jim Plunkett picked off for the 11th time this year, and the Seahawks first down back at the 20-yard line. Stopped by Archie Reese. And Connie Kawhi has come in at center replacing Blair Bush. We're told that uh, Bush is not hurt. Kawhi in a second season out of Hawaii, who was signed as a free agent last year. There he is, number 62, over the football. Chuck Knox is just a little hot right at the moment. Decided to make a, a temporary change. Hard hit on Hughes. Bob Nelson, inside linebacker on the right, number 51. Involved on that stop and some words between the Raiders and the Seahawks. You see a man, you mentioned Kawhi is in the ball game. Number 62. Doing a pretty good job on Archie Reach, Reese, number 74 for the Raiders. I'm sure it gets a little active in there, hey, big fella. <laughs> and it's a third down and four at the 26. Raiders lead at 10-7. Marcus Allen connecting with Todd Christensen on the halfback option pass. Dorning took one in from one and a 32-yard field goal. That's been it here. Swarm unleashing. Zorn got away with something that time. I tell you, he's, ha he's having a center problem. One throws him a little too high, the other one a little too low. That one bounced back there, and when you're in the shotgun, you have to take your eye off the defensive secondary. Now it all looks like a bunch of mumbo jumbo. If the ball is not up in your face when it's centered, you have no chance. And a punting situation. Jeff West back at his 10-yard line. To Greg Pruitt, who says fair catch, and drops it, but recovers. It's been a rugged day for Pruitt, who is one of the best in the NFL. He got jarred by Dave Brown last time, and now drops the fair catch. First out of the 36, Marcus Allen. And a penalty flag thrown in the secondary. So Allen trying the right side. Hold on the radio.
Raiders. Buffalo knocking off Baltimore 30 to 7. Baltimore started fine, but Buffalo's just a little too strong. You know, as, as fast as this game started offensively, with both teams starting off with fine drives and touchdowns early in the game, it has turned into a turnover defensive struggle. It's still a lot of hard hitting. Holding during the run, number 46, 10 yards, still first down. But it's been a little bit sloppy. I think sometimes the intensity creates sloppiness rather than, than good solid play, and uh, both offenses have staggered a bit. That hold called on the tight end, Todd Christensen. First down at 20, back at the 26. Bucket swings it to Allen. Allen to the 30. Out to the 31-yard line. Harry Justin came up with the intercept a moment ago. And Bruce Schultz combining on the tackle. And just under three remaining in this first half. It's the Raiders 10 and the Seahawks 7. Five-yard advance, second down and 15. That group has a lot of number one draft choices in it. That defensive group for the, for the Seahawks, they've got five all together. Up front, three number ones, Jacob Green, Mano Tuyasasopo, and Jeff Bryant. Working out of that 3-4. Good rush, and Bucket going deep. Again looking for Muhammad, and broken up. John Harris, number 44, able to break it up. John Harris was actually beaten when he made his break. Muhammad made a fine break, but Harris, with great speed, was able to recover and had the play as a center fielder would from the time it was thrown. The ball looped just a little bit. Muhammad didn't realize it. If you can't do that, with a man that the speed of Harris, easily trying to help out, getting back there. He's playing strong safety, remember. He comes back to see if he can be of any assistance. Six foot three, 210 pounds. With the speed he's got, he can be assistance to a lot of people. Jim Plunkett again looking deep for Calvin Muhammad, who apparently is all right. He left earlier, and it's Muhammad starting in place of the injured Cliff Branch. Safety blitz. Plunkett looking for the first down. He has it, and some more as he's brought down by Harris and Jackson. We can see it. You can see it up here, and the quarterback can see it from underneath that center very easily. Did, he, he saw a slight crack. When you're in a safety blitz, you've got no linebackers, you've got no defensive backs, you've got nobody to make the play. He got through a crack, picked up a first down, kept the drive alive. Now he's got to start throwing it a little better. Bring out your best. L.A. Raiders, record of 5-1, and one, leading the Seattle Seahawks by the score of 10-7. 20-yard pickup on that scamper by Plunkett. And with two minutes remaining, first half, Raiders first down at midfield. Plunkett goes to the middle. Malcolm Barnwell to the 30 for the first down. Keith Butler making the stop on number 80 in his third season out of Virginia Union. Nice play by the offensive line there, Marv. Uh, when you give a quarterback five seconds to throw the ball, Plunkett put three fakes on the defensive uh, lineman, two on the linebackers, and still had a chance to pick up Barnwell. Raiders in a hurry-up offense. First down at the 30. Marcus Allen. He was locked. Picked up a yard. Shelton Robinson. Linebacker on the inside, along with the nose tackle. Mato Tuiasasopo combining on the stop. We'll be back in a moment. Pull one out of the arsenal coaches, again. Coaches and quarterbacks are always are a little reluctant to use a running back throwing the ball, and we never go to it enough. I'll tell you what, because we're scared of being there once too often, I would. All right, Plunkett unleashes. Calvin Mohammed that time off the uh, short-range pass play, and Keith Simpson back in the lineup. Yeah, Plunkett hurt a couple more defensive linebackers or linemen. I'll tell you, when they hit him, it's harder, it's harder on them than him. First down was picked up as Simpson made the uh, tackle. And uh, let's see who that injured player is. 
Looks to be Michael Jackson. A timeout caught will be right. Jim Plunkett is quarterback of the Los Angeles Raiders. In his 13 years in the NFL, he's known great moments of victory and periods of despair. But Jim Plunkett always kept trying. He never gave up. Hello. It's a lesson I learned from my parents, and they taught me never to quit. You see, both of my parents were blind. But that never stopped them. They raised a family. They gave me a chance to be whatever my vision could make me. As a United Way volunteer, Jim teaches others the lessons that his parents taught him. Sometimes the mere sharing of the beauty in a single flower can open a new experience for someone, even if they never see it. Perhaps through people who cannot see, we can all come to understand and learn the lesson that life is what you make it, and what you make it is up to you. You know, thanks to you, it really does work for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. It's Michael Jackson, who was uh, shaken up earlier, and this time involved in chasing down Jim Plunkett, and it is Jackson hurt once again. All, all you do know is that he has some, a lot of pain, because uh, we're not going to try to play doctor. He is a very instrumental part of their defense, and to, to lose him is, uh, is a big blow. Been playing very well all year long, and it doesn't look like he's going to play anymore today. Seahawks have a very difficult schedule. They have faced only quality ball clubs to this point. Aside from Kansas City, they did beat uh, KC by the score of 17-13, beat the Jets, beat San Diego. And now you'd say, hey, it's about time for a breather, right? Wrong. Now they go Raiders, Pittsburgh, Raiders. Now out of the first nine games, they've got eight teams that are going to probably be in the playoffs. And, and I'll tell you the funny thing, and Chuck Knox says, don't think our players don't know it. He says, and the important thing to us is if we can be over 500 in our first nine games, we're going to be in the playoffs too. And he thinks his team is ready. He says, I'm not building for the future. He said, that future's a little overrated. He said, a lot of us don't have futures when we build for them. And he says, this group is ready to win right now, and we think we're preparing them. And Chuck Knox has been the NFL's designated builder after revamping Buffalo and the Los Angeles Rams and appears to be on the way here in Seattle. Let's remember, when he went to the Rams, they won the division championship for five years in a row when he got there. They didn't wait a couple years. In Buffalo, he started and they were so decimated that it took him a couple years, but it's not going to take him long. Formation, Marv, that they went to Christensen early in the game. It's Hawkins in motion. And here's Allen. Marcus Allen inside the 15, run out by Shelton Robinson, number 57. Second year out of North Carolina, and we're under a minute remaining. In this first half, Greg Gaines, second year pro out of Tennessee, replacing Michael Jackson. As we mentioned earlier, John, this is the area where the Seahawks are weak in the linebacking core. The backups are three rookies and a second year man in Gaines who just came on. That's right. They could at least afford to have an injury where they had it. is stopped with 26 seconds remaining. And a timeout called by the Raiders, so they're down to one timeout remaining. Having mechanical problems last week, throwing from off uh, the back foot, not stepping up, following through. Hey, we all fall into those little traps. I mentioned Zorn's timing wasn't as good on his outside patterns. Plunkett looks like his timing is pretty good right now. All right, here is a third down and four. Much time. Enzo, touchdown, Todd Christensen. Kerry Justin was beaten by Christensen, or perhaps fooled and missed time as that ball was thrown over the head of Justin. Well, I don't know what the specifics were, but I do know when you have a defender inside the, re the receiver, and you've got about two feet to go before the ball is out of the end zone. It's a great play if your receiver comes down with the football. You see, Christensen looks to have no play. Plunkett threw it the only place it could be thrown, just over Terry's uh, reach, and uh, that's one of the few times you see height make a big difference. Right, Christensen at 6-3, and Justin at 5-11. And Barr drills it. 
saw Todd Christensen. The pass receiver from Marcus Allen earlier on a 19-yard hookup. And now Plunkett able to connect for Christensen, his sixth touchdown. Oh, way to go! <laughs> I'm glad the language is nice and safe so far. We've heard a lot of players' voices. Zachary Dixon on the return. Jeff Barnes making the stop of Dixon. Yes, our sideline microphones very active, but these are clean guys. John. That's right. I've been trying to tell you that, Mark, for the last five weeks. I'm finally. <laughs> I'm glad you finally agree. Well, of course, the mic is on the Seattle sideline. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. <laughs> They're trying to trap me into indicating that I feel the Raiders are a dirty ball club. And you know, I've pulled away from that. I, I, Good. I feel they're an intimidating, a very solid, intimidating ball club. That's me. You know, I'll, I'll settle for that. Crowd does not appreciate the fact that uh, Chuck Knox prefers to run out uh, the clock rather than go for the uh, the bomb, but it can cost you here in the final seconds. And so, a very ineffective first half for Jim Zorn. Play timed, and Plunkett had, had put it within about a six-inch area. When you have a six-inch margin for error and you do complete it for a touchdown, that's a little beyond. Jim Zorn is two for eight, minus six yards in the first half. And the kickoff by Norm Johnson. Line drives it. And Clee Montgomery will stay right there. He actually uh, was screened by one of the officials, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And a look at the statistics uh, in the first half. As you see, the Seahawks uh, have the football for 16 and a half minutes. I think the turnover that's most impressive is the Raiders, again, turned the ball over three times. They had no turnovers themselves. They're still 10 points ahead. So if you talk about a team that thrives on adversity, these guys put themselves in a hole, create a way to get the ball back, and their defense does it time and again. Marv Albert, John Brody from the Kingdom in Seattle. Underway third quarter. See the stats on Plunkett. Has a first out of the 20. That's Hawkins in motion. And this is Marcus Allen. Three-yard advance, Keith Butler, the right inside linebacker on the stop. The report on Michael Jackson, the outside linebacker on the right, it's his left knee. He was taken off by a stretcher late second quarter. He's been taken to the hospital for x-rays. And that's, I just hope it gets better. So Greg Gaines is in on the outside on the right. Schultz, Robinson, Butler, and Gaines are the linebackers. Second down and seven. And it's Allen to the outside. And a flag thrown. Off the fumble, Kenny Easley. This may be an exceptionally costly penalty. It looks like it was a face mask. He was the only man in the area. He did cough the ball up. But that flag was thrown right where the ball carrier was. I'm not sure what the... All right, here's Jim Tunney. Personal foul. Back back. Number 27 declined. So the Seahawks maintain possession. Here's another look. And I was just about to say, this is the kind of ball game where Marcus Allen will have his opportunity to carry the ball a lot more. A 10-point lead in the second half. Little domination at the line of scrimmage by both offensive teams. First thing that happens, turnover. That crackback called on running back Frank Hawkins and turnover number four committed by the Raiders. Let's see if the Seahawks can take advantage. First out of the 21. Kurt Warner inside the 20. Rod Mark. There to make the stop. So Zorn goes right to Warner, the rookie out of Penn State. First round draft pick. Third player overall taken in the draft. And the leading rusher in the AFC. Warner. Actually, Zorn goes to the bench, Marv, and, and Chuck goes to Zorn yes. and says, give it to Warner. Uh, and that seems to be the way all the National Football League teams go. Second down and seven. Throw. All right, now that's a, that's what we were talking about earlier. 
throwing the ball to the outsides. He's got himself in a bad rhythm. Now, when he threw this ball to the outside, he was moving back on his back foot. Now, if you're throwing the ball to the sideline, you cannot generate enough power by throwing the ball that way. However, any way you do it, you've got to practice it during the week. You've got to get your timing with all your receivers, not just Largent. This ball was underthrown. And, and there's no reason for it. It's just that uh, we get a little careless, all of us, playing quarterback, and you lose the things that you do easily. And that question was raised during the week. Has Zorn developed some bad habits? Now he does not have his favorite receiver, Steve Largent, who's out with the knee. And Zorn is two for nine. Here's Zorn stepping up. have both gone out to try and double on the outsides. When you don't have any linebackers left in the middle of the field, you give a fellow like Zorn a chance to get up underneath the pass rush, he's going to pick up some yards and he scores. There's Norm Johnson. So Jim Zorn, not able to do it in the air, has done it on the ground, and Seattle trailing by only three. mystery to this game. It is a very emotional one, and this play right here is the reason these guys on their special team were as, as active as they were. You see Zorn's viewpoint. He sees nobody open because there is no one open. He finds a way to get around Bill Pakel, 71, the nose tackle from Rutgers, who we have seen very little today. His offensive line's given him plenty of protection. He's not been able to find any receivers open, and he's going to have to do that in order to beat them in the long run. That's two opportunistic touchdowns. Down 13-yard line. Hawkins and Allen, the running backs. And Hawkins able to get out of trouble and fires for the hole and it's picked up. Deep wide on the interception. The Raiders will not change their philosophy. You know two things going in. They're going to play tough defense, and they're going to throw the ball down the field 40 or 50 yards five or six different times during the ball game. They've been effective as long as their franchise has been in existence doing it. Plunkett does it time and again. They win ball games late. They get a lot of balls picked off. Here's another example, but it's pretty hard to second-guess a team that does it week in, week out, and overcomes adversity the way they do. Zorn first down at the Seattle 32 following another Raider turnover. And Kurt Warner stacked up. Matt Millen, Howie Long involved down the tackle. There's Dave Brown. Came up with his second interception of the season. He's been playing very well. In fact, opposition has not tested his area. That time he was involved in double coverage on Muhammad. He mentioned before the ball game, had a chance to sit and talk to him for a minute. He said, you know, it's the first time since I left the Steelers, which where he was his first year, that I have the feeling that we are contenders. And he says it's a wonderful feeling, and it really pumps you up if you've been in this game seven or eight years. Second down and eight at the 34. who was all over Kurt Warner. Rod Martin, one of the underrated players in the NFL. Raiders feel he belongs in the Pro Bowl, and they may get their wish this season. He was elected captain of their football team, and uh, that usually goes to a fellow that has played consistently outstanding over a few years. And I'll tell you, with this group of talent, for him to be the man they picked, uh, Ted Hendricks has been the captain for the past couple of years. It just shows you to be in his league. It is applaud enough. 
loss on the play back to a third down 13 at the 29. And let's see what Zorn can do. He's two for nine. And he is pummeled. Big rush by the Raiders. Okay, we didn't mention that uh, we haven't mentioned the young players defensively in the line for the Raiders, but on that occasion, all four of them almost beat Zorn back to throw. Greg Townsend, Bill Pacquiao, uh, Archie Reese, they're all sitting right in his lap before he could find anybody. So much for the Seahawk series. Now Blair Bush is back in for the snap. He had been replaced by Cotty Kawhi. Bush hurt his back earlier. And here's West. Rick Pruitt. Fair catch again. And that's all Blair Bush was in there to do, was to center the ball. Don't hit anybody. After he centered it, he walked very slowly off the field. So that's about it for him. 26-year-old Tom Flores took over from John Matt, took the Raiders to the victory in Super Bowl 15, beating the Eagles. Raiders leading the Seahawks 17-14. Raiders back to the offense. This is Hawkins across the 40-yard line. Frank Hawkins in his third year out of Nevada, Reno, picking up four on the play. Greg Gaines, who came on for the injured Michael Jackson, combining with Keith Butler, Keith Butler on the stop. So it'll be a second down and six. And the ball spotted at the 41. Well, the Orioles looking to wrap it in five, leading the Phillies 2-0. In the fourth inning. Every game's been close and good. Change of direction by Allen. So Marcus Allen hemmed in. You generally tell a back, Marv. Don't do that. That'll get everybody injured, okay? That'll get your lineman picked off. That'll get that'll get you hurt. We'll get a big loss on the play. We'll have a second 16. But you can't do that in Marcus Allen's case because he was headed for a certain seven or eight-yard loss, turned it into back to the line of scrimmage. And, uh, so in his case, you just let him steal on his own, so to speak. It's an instinctive move, and you really have to let the guy uh, do what he wants. You that got time it. he was trapped by Gaines and then was stopped by Easley. That's right. Third down and four. All down by Gregory Johnson. That's Johnson, number 27, in his third year out of Oklahoma State. Plunkett showed the ball as if he were about to hand off. Yeah, but what he did is he didn't hide it from the offside. Generally, Plunk is pretty nifty. He can get he keeps it hidden from the ones he wants to keep it hidden from. Sometimes he doesn't speak too nifty. <laughs> it's not right there. But I'll tell you what, that's one of the very rare times he gets caught trying to be tricky. And here is Ray Guy back at his 20, getting set to punt for the first time this afternoon. Paul Johns in his third season out of Tulsa, returning last week from the knee injury. And he's the deep man. This is Johns, 25-yard line. Thrown. You, never know, 
Walker down. You never know exactly why, Marv, but I know a fellow that's played as long as Lyle Alzado, and we saw he and Bill Pacal in the, in the discussion with Howie Long. These guys are playing good football. They're still on the losing end. You know, once in a while, it's not a bad idea to create a little a little turmoil. You're away from home. Create a little problem. Get your own team juiced up. Get them back in the ball. 75, Los Angeles, number 70, Seattle. All setting after the play. All right, so the point after by Johnson is good, and the Seahawks lead the Raiders 21-17. For the past two... Greg Pruitt. Once again, tremendous coverage by the Seahawks, and this has been their specialty. Isn't it funny how whenever a team is really having to go at you, and, and the emotion levels up, and the game is, is, is changed around a little bit, one thing that is mostly emotions, and Rusty Tillman, who's a special teams coach for the Seahawks, knows this better than anybody, because he was with the Redskins for a number of years when they were outstanding. We take a look at a play like this by Paul Jones on a special team. That gives all those guys a little, a little, a little pump up. Now they go down on a kickoff and keep them inside the 15. And they are officially calling it a 75-yard punt return by Jones. First down at the 12. station identification this is the NBC television network WMAQ TV channel 5 Chicago Marv Albert John Brody from the kingdom in Seattle Washington as you see eight minutes left third quarter it's been a wild third Seahawks with 14 points already and lead it by the score of 21 17 a timeout has been called a third down Third and goal for the five is upcoming. We'll be right back. Third and goal at the five-yard line. Biggest play of the ball game. They have to get seven points, or they're not going to be able to handle it. And Zorn in trouble just throws it away. And the Raiders contending that there was no one in sight, but the intended receiver, Paul Johns, was dumped right at the goal line. The Raiders have played real good defense. If you take a look at it, after the first drive that the Seahawks put on them in the first quarter, you take a look at those stats, two for 12. They can be a little misleading, but when Zorn has not thrown the ball well, he's been high, he's been off base, there haven't been a lot of receivers open. Maybe it's because Largent is out, okay? But them having to settle for a field goal here will keep their lead to only seven points. 
and they, the defense is totally dominating. And it's a 23-yard attempt by Norm Johnson. Oh, it's good. And the Seahawks now lead it by seven. 24 to 17 with seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 23-yard field goal by Johnson. So Johnson is now 8 for 11 on the season, and he's been a hot man. He's connected 18 of his last 22, his uh, previous attempt. You'll recall the bad snap. Well, NBC Sports is pleased to announce the acquisition of the Skins game, a unique golf tournament where Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson, Arnold Palmer, Gary Player compete for 300 and 60,000. You're not a player in one of the contestants. You can't lose on that one. Huh? And the kickoff by Johnson. Clean Montgomery on the return. And again, excellent coverage within the 10-yard line by the Seahawks. Eric Lane, who has been terrific on special team play, that time leading the assault. You almost get the feeling that the, the Seahawks say to their offense, go out there and hold them, and we've got this ball game. Uh, everything they do defensively seems to be uh, effective right now, and special teams have just taken the whole flow away from the Raiders. And in seven and a half minutes, 17 points have been registered for the Seahawks. First and 10 at the 10 yard line. Calvin Muhammad out to the left. in motion and Marcus Allen there was a mix up on the handoff as Plunkett made contact up high on Allen and it jarred him for an instant there's no one immune to be to the effect of momentum when it starts turning everybody is affected by it you can tell the whole flow has changed in the second half a couple of pickoffs great punt return and it gets the offense to really starting to think about themselves. John, do you believe Kenny Easley is in there at strong safety? Yeah, I saw him. I hardly believe it. Oh, here's Allen. Game tackle, Keith Butler with the hard hit. There's Butler, 53. He's had an outstanding game. Kenny Easley, who left moments ago with an ankle injury, is right there, has not missed a beat. Well, you know, when you have a chronic injury like that, the pain is, is severe when it's there, but when it's been injured and it's loose and you, you get you get it, you get the feeling back, he probably knows I can't do anything more to it, so let's have a go with it. Back he is. Third down and three. Plunkett running out of the pocket has the first down and wisely goes down at the 28-yard line. Rick Gaines covering up on the play. So Jim Plunkett out of the Jim Zorn playbook able to pick up the first down. Jim Plunkett does not back off. He can have things go worse over a short period of time than anybody I've seen. Now, watch Kenny Easley. He's trying to fly down the field with Malcolm Barnwell. He knows that Plunkett is just as liable to go down the field 50 or 60 yards again as he was the last couple times. But I get back to Jim. He does not back off. When you put a challenge up there, he's, he's big enough to accept it. Although he's had a few interceptions, he's liable to come back and beat you. Steely picked off Todd Christensen in a wrestling match. Gaines and Robinson on the double coverage. So that's the sixth reception of the day for Christensen, who has caught two touchdown passes. Well, I tell you, Plunkett was ready for the play. He read the blitz. He read this man, number 45. Kenny Easley coming in fast. He knew, hey, my out guy is Christensen. Where is he? He finally finds him. Excellent reception. Second down and one for the Raiders at their 37-yard line. Hawkins, the lone deep back. Allen lined up back behind the uh, tight end. What a shovel move. Marcus Allen, first down. Shelton, Robinson, and Keith Butler combined on the stop. So the toss by Plunkett to the first down picked up by the Raiders out of the 49-yard line. 
I think that, that Plunkett not only throws the ball for longer receptions than anybody in the game, but also shorter. He can throw some of the shortest passes that are effective of anybody I've ever seen. That's because he spreads people out, his back stand around the pile, looking for peace, peace man, and he gave them one. Plunkett looking for Doki Williams and underthrows. Doki Williams, the rookie from UCLA, who has terrific speed and can jump. Caught a touchdown last week, and he was going down the left sideline, but the pass was thrown short. Second down and 10 at the 49. This crowd is really alive. Capacity crowd at the Kingdome. Better than 65,000 on hand, and here's the wave. Both feet go all which way. He lets you throw him wherever you want. But I'll tell you, the man has some ability. And he just stays in there the whole ball game and in his own little unorthodox way makes things happen. And the referee Jim Tunney helping pluck it up. Well, pluck it a solid 6'2", 215 pounds. And looking at a third down and 10. down with Cleve Montgomery. Keith Simpson on the tackle, a first down of the Los Angeles Raiders. That completion just quieted down the house. You take a man, we mentioned Plunkett, here's the deep, the, the deep secondary. He's trying to get to number 28, Cleve Montgomery. The ball is thrown right on the break, thrown right where it has to be. Plunkett's thrown several interceptions, but he also has excellent timing in critical situations. Jim Plunkett is only two yards short of the uh, 20,000 career mark. Jim Zorn was within that range, but he's lost yardage. <laughs> to throw again. He couldn't find anyone, so he takes it himself and has a first down. Jeff Bryant able to race downfield, combining with Keith Butler to make the stop, a 17-yard pickup. He is so dangerous oh, well, when he cocks that arm. Marv, the reluctance you generally have when you give it to a halfback to throw an option pass is that when you give him a chance to throw a pass, he wants to prove to everybody that he's a good thrower, okay? Well, in this case, not only does he see no one open, we get the wide field, but he also sees an open space to run in. Now, the, the decision not to throw the ball, to make a decision that quick, take off, go to the open space, I give him a lot of chances to throw. First down of the 20. play we've seen Jacob Green make. Just kind of split guard and tackle. Slipped up on Plunkett before he could let his receivers get into their pattern. And remember again, the Raiders are on the whole philosophy. Give your quarterback enough time to let your, let your, your receivers get down the field. They didn't on that occasion, and that's the result. Second sack of the day for the Seahawks. First for Green. Second and 16. Pruitt with acceleration inside the 20 yard line. So Greg Pruitt running from scrimmage for the first time today. Mano Tuyasasopo on the stop, an eight yard advance for Pruitt. You know, you'd have thought a guy like Greg Pruitt, who's been a great back for so long, uh, it couldn't be, you couldn't affect his confidence, all right? But he said that that long run that he made, 96 or seven yards against Washington, just kind of reconfirmed in his own mind that he still had it as a running back. And this is the first chance he's had to, to show it. There's Tuiasa Sopo, number 74, third down and seven. At the Seattle 17.
time for a mix-up. I didn't expect it to happen then. There was a mix-up in the backfield for the Raiders. I actually didn't think they were set for a full second. I thought they'd, they'd throw a flag, but they didn't. But watch Pluckett coming out of here. Tried to get out. Dave Dalby steps right on his foot. He did not get out. Whenever you see a quarterback fall coming out from the center, it's almost 100% of the time the center stepping on his foot. And a long-range field goal from 42 yards away being attempted by Chris Paul. And it is good. So far, drilling a throw. He hit from 32 yards earlier and now from 42. It's a 24-20 Seattle Seahawk lead. Well, remember, the Raiders do have a habit of coming back. They, they hang right in there. The way the defense for Seattle has dominated the Raiders over the past couple couple quarters, you, uh, you figure if their offense could play a little bit, they'd be fine. But take a look at this man, Willie Brown. You, we've talked about Lester Hayes. We've talked about all the fine cornerbacks that the Raiders have. He's the man that instructs them. He's the man that wrote the book on how to cover one-on-one. -on -one. When he lined up, and he did so often, everybody in the house knew it's going to be Willie Brown against your best receiver all day long. You can take your best shots. Year in, year out, he ended up in the Pro Bowl. I've tried him several times, gone broke most of them. Yes, you and Willie had a couple of uh, interesting moments. Well, we used to, we'd, we'd line Gene Washington up against him every week, and they'd say, fine, hi, and every time you'd beat him, he'd congratulate you. But it's generally the last time he spoke to you all day long. <laughs> Very sincere congratulations, yeah. I'm sure. The kickoff by Barr. Across the 20 yard line, but a flag thrown. Otis McKinney providing the coverage. And uh, while we await the call, well, here it is against the Raiders. Check of the scoreboard. Dallas in a very unconventional ball game for the Cowboys this season. Way in front. Third quarter, Atlanta leads the LA Rams. 21-14, third quarter. Cincinnati and Denver involved in a good one. Tied at 17 in the fourth. And the Giants in Kansas City even in the third. Offside, 38 on the kicking team. Five-yard re-kick. So they'll do it again. Chester Willis, a member of the uh, Raider kicking team, on the call. Well, Ed Berman told you earlier of the uh, Eddie Murray home run and the Orioles in front of the Phillies, 5 nothing in the fifth. Taking three in a row at Veterans Stadium is no small task. I'd say that's deserving it. Birds looking to wrap it in five. Chris Barr getting set to kick again. Well, field goal position is what the Seahawks need, and this penalty may have just given them an added opportunity to... Uh, get some of that their offense has not shown that they can move the ball you remember how well Warner was moving it early in the first quarter and some of the second he hasn't been given an opportunity to run the ball much and when he has it hasn't been effective uh, the Raiders know if their defense keeps playing the way they can to get a couple breaks themselves it will change Raiders coming at five and one. The only loss to the Redskins. They've beaten Cincinnati, Houston, Miami, Denver, and Kansas City. Low kick by Barr. Zachary Dixon out to the 15. Oh, look out. And again, a flag down. Zachary Dixon going across the field. That's throwing it. That's thrown in the clipping area. No question about it. Well, we had a 75-yard punt return earlier this quarter, which tied a Seattle Seahawks club record. Paul Johns running it in for the score from 75 yards away. We have also had three Seattle penalties that have totaled more than 100 yards. Personal foul during the run back, blocking below the waist 
number 35, half the distance to the goal line. Well, it's uh, the Kamikaze special team man, Don Dufek, called for the personal foul. At a very bad time. Seahawks, first and ten. At their 11-yard line. 56 seconds left, third quarter. And Zorn with time. And it knocked out of his hands. And let's see the Raiders. That's a safety. It's called a safety. Apparently one of the Seahawks was able to recover. Well, we've seen everything here this afternoon. Yeah, you got to take a look. We've been pretty tough, uh, pretty tough on Zorn. But who can throw in this in this little vacuum? You can see their defensive line is putting such pressure on Zorn that they're coming from all angles. Howie, Howie Long got his hand on Zorn just as he was in the motion to throw. Fortunately, one of his own men caught the ball, but for a safety, that puts the ball game within within a field goal reach. A whole play, a whole quarter to go, and if the Seahawks don't create some sort of offensive movement, they are history. It was the right guard, Robert Pratt who was uh, able to come up with that loose football, and then he was hammered down. That's right. So, the safety to be fumbled. That is being ruled as a fumble and a sack for the safety. So, the only good that comes out of it statistically, Jim Zorn, who is suffering, is not charged. Yeah, that makes it... Yeah, <laughs> makes it wonderful. Yeah. They've been pretty fortunate, you know, throwing 60-yard interceptions on the exchanges because uh, they throw one for 60. Uh, Seattle picks it off, gets stopped short of a first down. And you can see Al, Al Davis with Sam Berkovich, uh, one of his longtime friends. Al is very concerned. He knows they've done all the things you're supposed to do to, to get the seconds remaining. Third quarter. And Plunkett to throw first down. And sack of the day combination of Green and Schultz on the sack a loss of five ought to be a second and 15 back at the 23 we have seen almost every possible way a team can <laughs> score. Halfback option thrown by Marcus Allen, several field goals, a safety. Punt return for 75 yards by Paul Johns. 20-yard broken play run by a quarterback. Look it on second down for Christensen. And a good move after the catch as Christensen picks up the first down. Gregory Johnson, the extra defensive back, taking the tackle as time has run out in this third quarter, and Jim Plunkett has got over the 20,000 yardage mark for his career at the end of three, 24-22, Seahawks by two. We'll be back after these words from your local station. It's an NBC movie. All right, uh, hello to Maggie. <laughs> As we get underway, fourth quarter. And what has been an entertaining game. Seahawks leading the Raiders 24-22. And a first down at the 40-yard line. For the Raiders. That's Malcolm Barnwell in motion. Play action. And Plunkett dumps it off. A short pickup. Butler all over the receiver, Hawkins. And Plunkett in his 13th season out of Stanford joined the Raiders as a free agent back in 1978 after he was released by the San Francisco 49ers. Well, you could tell right then he was a, he was a very confused player. Uh, Al Davis did a very wise thing. He gave him an opportunity to rest for a little over a year before he really and when he came back he started challenging for the job. That's when Al knew he was ready to play and he came in in a critical time. Ooh. Marcus Allen short a couple for the first down. Bruce Schultz 
on the stop. Up front, it's Green, Chui Asasopo, and Bryant. The linebackers, Schultz, Robinson, Butler, and Gaines. Michael Jackson replaced by Gaines. Jackson with a knee injury taken to the hospital for x-rays. No further report. Third down and two. Raiders at their 48. And here's Allen. first down and lost yarder Shelton Robinson right there so Ray Guy will come on to punt okay the same play that picked up eight yards on first down the Seahawks are ready for one of the few times you see Marcus Allen pick up nothing or actually lose yardage the things that are generally effective for the Raiders offensively have not been in the second half guy who had one run back by Paul Johns for 75 yards back at his 30. Johns in his third season at a Tulsa. This time guy with excellent hang time. And Johns at the 10. Tommy lost his balance in uh, trying to put a move on. James Davis was covering. He used real good judgment, though, because when he did slip through and fell down, he didn't try to get up again or he'd have been history. We'd like fourth quarter. It's a first down at the 14-yard line. And they work out of the eye. Kurt Warner. Short pickup. And the Raiders have handled Warner very well. Yeah, I guess it's not too long, but it's seven. You know what? I think it was six yards. Now, when you find a back that can scoot for six, and you and I both thought he was stopped at the line of scrimmage, uh, they're going to have to try him a little more often. All right, a second down. Well, they say five now. He's All right. Second down and five at the 19. And Warner tries the left side. Refusing to go down, Lyle Alzado. Able to follow up to the far side. It'll be a third down and two. 67 yards picked up thus far by Kurt Warner. First time that these two have met since the Fiesta Bowl a couple of years back, in which Warner. Uh, Raced for 145 yards and two touchdowns while Allen was uh, held in check. Here's Zorn running out of the pocket. And has the first down. Bob Nelson, number 51, on the tackle. Well, what happens is you take a look at films and you see, hey, whenever we drop back, their inside linebackers turn their backs and try to get deep and go into their respective areas. When you see that in the film, that's a perfect play to execute against it. Take three steps back. As soon as they get moving, you come up where they left. It's, it's almost a gimme, and uh, a lot of teams don't have a quarterback like Zorn who can move that well to pick up the difference. And he's picked up 41 yards on the ground. First down. His air time's a little suspect, yes. however. Yes, first down of the 25. And Zorn fires a ball. The tight end, Charlie Young, his first catch of the day, Mike Davis on the stop. First time they've aimed at him. Charlie Young had that big day last week, his best as a Seahawk, seven receptions. I think you'll find that may be his best ever. Uh, Charlie Young has been an outstanding tight end. When he was younger, he had good speed. He seems to have lost that. He doesn't get very open, and it leads a quarterback into him, into the, the feeling that, hey, maybe I shouldn't throw it. But if you throw it to him when he is covered, he'll come down with 80%. At a first down for the Seahawks. So Zorn is now three for 13 for a total of four yards. So right now he's out of the minus category. Well, that's great. Uh, he's he like, has uh, really he's, had one that he will he not just, forget. Marv, he just put some signal on him. Sounds like he's trying to stop the bleeding when you put your wrist together. I, I don't know what it means. <laughs> All right, 
the swing for Hughes. Nice move by Hughes. David Hughes out of the backfield. And right at the first down marker, let's see where they spot it. Hughes has run very well all day. When given any opportunity, he, he has made the most of it. He's primarily a blocker for Warner. That's a tough duty indeed. He does a good job there, but you see he gets a quick screen. Does very well once he's given the ball. Here's Reggie McKenzie. Old veteran still outstanding when he leads a, leads a screen. Picks up his man. Picks up the first two, I think. He may be just a little short, but I thought it was good for a first. Reggie McKenzie, 33 years old, spent 11 years in Buffalo, a key man of the Bills Electric Company blocking for O.J. Simpson. He's an example of uh, Chuck Knox's theory that you take about five guys who teach the rest of your squad how to win because it really gets tough late in the season. You'll see the work habits that these fellows have developed over the years will shine through and keep these fellows in the hunt. Seahawks just short of the first down. It's a second at inches. Hughes for the first down. David Hughes trying the left side has picked it up. Five minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. And the Seahawks, who had a big third quarter with 17 points, leading the Raiders 24-22, and they have come from behind to do it. Well, it's just been a, that was a, an outstanding offensive surge. That was just an illustration of how good that line can be. Here's Warner. Breaking tackles as he gets to the Raider 49-yard line. Now for an update, let's get back to NFL 83 in New York. All right, Marv Albert, Steve DeBerg has done everything in terms of uh, offense here today. Zorn, able to get it away. ruled incomplete right up the sideline well Johns was doing the things you have to do to help your quarterback when he's in trouble Zorn was not designed to roll out he was elusive enough to get out of the pass rush and when he did so Johns tried to come back and help him but didn't have it as he crossed the, the stripe so it is a third down and eight at midfield fans the call but he was out of bounds out of the shotgun again Zorn incomplete Bill Pacquiao got a piece of it Dan Dornick the intended receiver and that is it for the Seattle drive there's the backup quarterback Dave Creed number 17 you know, generally I don't see any I don't see any receivers that he could throw the ball to who are open I don't know what it is but Steve Largent is so adept at getting into open spaces. You're just accustomed to seeing a lot of space between uh, the defender and the wide receiver. He's not in the ball game, and I haven't seen anybody picking up the slack. Jeff West back at his 36. And a beauty. Greg Pruitt lets it fly, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. So the punting of West has uh, kept uh, Pruitt in check. And a timeout has been called with 8.31 remaining fourth quarter.
unusual scoring play. That ought to just about capture every way you can do it. So here is Noel Johnson looking to give the Seahawks a 31-22 lead. Stoddard at uh, inside linebacker on the left. Off the uh, recovery. The hit by Jeff Bryant. And here are the Seahawks scoring again. And they lead the Raiders 31-22. The kickoff by Johnson. Pruitt. Once again, met by superb coverage by the Seahawks, and it's uh, Don Dufek leading the way. Special teams and defense. Now, a lot of people would say, and Plunkett, I think, agrees, hey, his arm was close, he was moving forward, but the ball, in evidence, went backwards, which means they hit it before the ball was on its movement forward. The ball never made any movement forward. He's trying to get a call from the official mentioning that he was in the, in the motion of throwing the ball, and it doesn't matter whether you are or not. If your arm's not coming forward with the ball when it's hit, the scoreboard earlier today at Shea in New York. The Dolphins doing it to the Jets, 32-14. This isn't the only place turnovers were a factor. Look at Pittsburgh. They got five of Sipes, five of Richard Todd's. San Francisco with a late rally, walloping New Orleans. New England over San Diego, 37-21. Minnesota winning big over Houston. 31-17, Detroit beating Chicago. Second and goal at the six.
things are going bad for the Raiders. Gregory Johnson on the tackle of Montgomery. And the Raiders now first down at the 13. Here's Montgomery recovering. Now watch Pruitt. Oh. That's right. It's get, once it starts getting tough, it just keeps getting tougher. This is the first time I've ever seen the Raiders intimidated. We've seen them play. They've come back from adversity so many times, but today they're just trying to stop stop the dike. Well, the Seahawks have the Raiders just where they want them now. Here's Plunkett, and he gets it away. The catch by Doki Williams, covered by Dave Brown. Let's go back to the scoreboard. Another final, St. Louis over Tampa Bay, 34-26. Today on the Eagles, 37-7. Atlanta and the LA Rams are tied in the fourth at 21. Second down at four. Duncan. And this time, it's Joe Nash, the backup nose tackle. Second year man out of Boston College. was responsible for the touchdown that they made a little earlier. He's the man who's been getting there first quite a bit this afternoon. Well, Jeff Bryant trying to do his best to get in there. Bruce David pushes him away. Here goes a helmet. There's no head in it. Fortunately. And there's Joe Nash. As a free agent last year, 6'3, 250 pounds. He's in a nose tackle. Third down at the 11. Defensive lineman's dream. You just get in your starting box and go. And look at it again. In big trouble, and they call it a sack. It's whistled dead. That is sack number eight. Jacob Green this time. Barb, it's a good thing Jim Cuddy's doing this. way before. It takes a lot of man to stand up, keep your head up when you walk off the field. It'll go the other way, but not today. <laughs> so two rough weeks for the Raiders who barely got by Kansas City last week in a poor performance and really uh, taking it here from Seattle. And the puck by Guy. This is John the opening ball down at the 40 yard line a penalty marker thrown 51 yard punt by Guy and a 13 yard return by Johns remember these two teams play again in two weeks you think it's getting a little heated right now wait till you get down there in the Coliseum in about 14 days and see if the heat doesn't rise a little there's only one game difference these are the two contenders in the AFC West the flag was waved off as we go back to the scoreboard. Denver leading Cincinnati 24-17 in the fourth quarter. And Kansas City rolling it up in the second half now in front of the Giants 31-17. Tough to figure the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, they played so well last week and still lost the ball game. I think they're just a better football team than people recognize. Seahawks have established a club record by coming up with their eighth sack you know, they're playing great football, but isn't it funny how when people started the season, they said, hey, uh, the best the best division is the AFC East. I'll tell you the best division is the AFC West. <laughs> it's It will be a race right down to the wire. Crowd cheering, uh, responding to the announcement that the Seahawks have established a new team record with uh, the eight sacks. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Seattle Seahawks and the National Football League is prohibited. 
29 remaining in the fourth quarter. Here's Mark Wilson, the uh, backup to Jeff Plunkett. Warming up, we might see a, a quarterback change. I'm sure we will. It's a pity change. It's, you know, you got to feel sorry for the man after a while. There's no no chance to win the ball game with five and a half minutes left. And uh, they need two touchdowns and a field goal and don't have the ball. There's also another man that's come in for the first time all season, Cullen Bryant. He's replacing uh, Kurt Warner, and it's not a bad time. So Cullen Bryant now in the uh, Seattle backfield. There's Plunkett. On the sideline. First down at the 40 yard line. And this is Bryant. Colin Bryant in his 11th season out of Colorado. He played for Chuck Knox in Los Angeles uh, with the Rams. He spent 10 years with the Rams. In fact, finished on the Rams sixth. Sixth on the all time uh, list in rushing was a co-captain of the L.A. Rams. Flag is down. Chuck Knox has got a good memory. <laughs> he remembered coaching him. And he's another one of those examples of character that he says, I, want, I just want these guys around me. They've given me an awful lot of service, and they're not through yet. So they mark it off against the Raiders. Personal foul during the run, number 36 defense. First down. Mike Davis, strong safety call for the uh, personal foul. There's Davis. Last year, a guy who led the uh, NFL in crunching hits and yellow flags, but he has cut down on the penalties. First down of the Raider, 21. Seahawks lead at 38-22. And it's Bryant again. Cullen actually saw some action, limited action, in the opener against uh, Kansas City, but setting it out because of a leg problem. Signed as a free agent during the offseason. And uh, as you say, Kurt Warner given a rest right here with just under five minutes remaining fourth quarter. Warner with 75 yards, 22 carries, averaging about 88. Second down and eight. Uh, first time he's touched the ball from the line of scrimmage and then coughed it up. And again, a, a, a flare-up. Let's see. Looks like Van McElroy. Well, I tell you, you got so many cover. bodies in there yes. and the ball's shooting around everywhere. McElroy was uh, very alert, picked up the fumble, and that's the first turnover. And a little, too little, too late. Mark Wilson has come out at quarterback as the Raiders take over. So Eric Lane fumbles on his uh, first carry. And here are the Raiders with Wilson in his fourth year out of Brigham Young, making his first appearance of the regular season. And going sideline overthrows intended for Malcolm Barnwell. Kerry Justin covering on the play. Flores going with Mark Wilson, who was a starter two years ago when Plunkett was injured. Started nine games. Listen, he's a good player. It's a, you know, and he's just about at the time in his career, having been there for four years, when he's ready to step in and be a starter if he's going to be in this league. And I think the whole Raider organization recognizes this fact. His time has just not come yet. It's tonight on NBC, first counter followed by Knight Rider at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Completion to uh, Todd Christensen. So that is the eighth reception by Christensen, who has had himself a day. He's caught two touchdowns, stopped by uh, Don Dufek. Incidentally, tonight on first camera, there's going to be a report on the ultimate game. Ultimate is the name of the game. It's played with a Frisbee. <laughs> and uh, yes, they have teams and competition, rules and regulations, but no referees. A very rugged sport. I've always thought that'd be okay. Oh, okay. Wilson throwing on the run. Christensen oh. once again and hit by Kenny Easley. But 
we're down to three and a half remaining fourth quarter and it's a 16 point lead for the Seahawks 38 22 it's still important for Mark Wilson he can create a good situation for himself right now the ball game is out of reach but he's got to look good to impress the coach and get people thinking he might be the guy in the future and the hurry up offense so Wilson couldn't find anyone and is brought down right near the 45 by Don Dufek here we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC WNHU Television TV, Network. TV, Channel 5, Chicago. Second down and four. Hawkins on the first down. I know a lot of people said to say, well, wait a minute. Why didn't they put Mark Wilson in there earlier if he's supposed to be so good? Well, it's not the Raiders style. They put you in the lineup. You stay in the lineup. You either play your way in or play your way out. Now, remember, the Raiders are 5-1 and one with Plunkett. Their one loss is, is incredible with Jim at quarterback. This is a chance for him to get back in that in the hat. good play though by Mark I mean they had him by the jersey three or four times back there he had he was able to get out but when he did that was when the impressive thing started rather than just throw the thing wildly toward Todd Christensen he made a motion to go downfield when he did so the defensive back ran with Todd and he was able to pick up the first down look you got to have pretty good movement to get out of this jam he does and now he kind of jockeys around in here makes a motion downfield defensive back Justin goes back with the receiver and he picks up a first. 15 yard pickup. Sam Clancy nearly got to him. Clancy seeing some action here in the fourth quarter. Now Wilson with time. Marcus Allen. Now back of the line of scrimmage by Shelton Robinson as we approach two minutes remaining fourth quarter. So now we get the two minute warning. in Seattle. Here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Let's see, we've got Tarkenton, Unitas, Snee, Jurgensen, Hart, Hadel, and Brody, a very select group. Yeah, I think the one thing that we all had in common is we did have, we did get together after the ball game and have a, have a, a brew or two. Uh -huh. I can't see any exceptions here. Second and 11 penalty marker thrown as Wilson goes incomplete. Intended for Clee Montgomery. Keith Simpson got a piece of it. And the uh, call on the Raiders. It has been another rough day for that Raider offensive line. They were criticized last week for their performance against the Kansas City Chiefs and uh, not a pleasant day here against Seattle. No, it's not typical of the way they play either. You know, they usually give their quarterback all day when he needs it. And today they've needed it and haven't been given that. Holding 50. Still second down. It's the center, Dave Dalby. Looky uh, here. Yes, Denver over Cincinnati 24-17. That puts them to within one game of the lead. You take a look, 4-3, 4-3, 5-2. What happened to San Diego? They're having a little trouble getting a tie. Good one coming up uh, next week at Mile High. San Diego playing at Denver. And John and I will do that to handle that one as Wilson. Nice leaping catch by the tight end, Todd Christensen. So uh, first down for the Raiders. You see the clock running down. We approach a minute and a half remaining. Final score, the Cowboys over the Eagles, 37 to 7. Hey, Mark throws a good football. He's got a lot of... This is Hawkins out of the 10-yard line. John Harris, the free safety, on the stop. And uh, timeout being called by the Raiders. You know, you take a look at a number six, Mark Wilson, you say... Okay, they drafted him first. Obviously, they expected him to play some when they drafted him. It was a matter of time. Plunkett came on and took that job away. 
it's, it's a critical time in Mark's career because he's either going to be a player in the next year or two or after having seated himself on the pine for five or six years I think his playing days would really be hurt so he's trying to play himself in the lineup and uh, I wish him all the luck in the world taking Plunkett's job though is no easy task all right during the course of this uh, time out let me tell you the executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman coordinating producer of NBC's football Ted Nathanson the producer for today's telecast has been Kenneth Edmondson director Richard Klein Technical Director Art Feverich and the Associate Director Ray Vanassi. Thanks to our spotters Jim Ott, Gary Moore, and our statistician Barry Culver. Minute 20 remaining in this fourth quarter. Todd Christensen has caught 10 balls for 130 yards and two touchdowns, and uh, they are still behind 38 to 22. He has caught more balls than the whole offense for the Seahawks, so I guess throwing and catching is not the whole game. And the first touchdown pass was thrown by the running back, Marcus Allen. Wilson hanging right in and lost one. So the incompletion, Dokey Williams, the intended receiver. That's what playing together does for you. If he had been, they'd been together some, he put that ball right up in the air where Doki Williams would have taken it on the dead run had he continued. He was trying to find an opening. The ball was already up there, and uh, it hit the pad. Second down and 10, just outside the 10-yard uh, line. And at 15, remaining. And the Seahawks with a 38 to 22 lead. Marcus Allen on the reception. And Allen inside the five. Now to a minute. And counting. It'll be a third down at about two. Timeout called by the Raiders. And the Raiders and the Seahawks each have one timeout remaining. Recapping the score, early first 19-yard touchdown pass. Marcus Allen on the halfback option to the tight end, Todd Christensen. Seattle with a long drive consuming eight minutes, capped off by Dan Dorning taking it in. And we were tied at seven after one. Chris Barr hit from 32 yards away, making a 10-7 Raiders. Plunkett connecting with Christensen for a 17-7 Raider lead at halftime. Early third, it was Jim Zorn who ran it in from 18 yards out, cutting it to 17-14 Raiders. Later on, third quarter, the punt return by Paul Johns for 75 yards, equaling a Seattle club record. It was 21-17 Seattle. Johnson of the Seahawks connecting for a 23-yard field goal, making it 24-17. Chris Barr from 42 yards away, cut it to 24-20 Seattle. Then the safety, Alzado credited with that safety. It was a 24-22 ball game. Seahawks on top. And a big play. The hit by Jeff Bryant leading to the fumble. Shelton Robinson gobbling it up and taking it in for a 31-22 lead. And then Kurt Warner, six-yard run, making a 38-22 following yet another Raider turnover. Every way you could, could think of, but throw it. and two. 58 seconds left, fourth quarter. And Wilson throwing end zone, and it's picked up. Intercepted was intended for Allen, and it's Justin again, his second of the day. I guess that's the way this baby ought to end. But a penalty marker down. Justin, sixth year out of Oregon State with the interception, but let's see if it holds up.
possession, and it will be a first and goal from the one. As they pick up the uh, first down on that penalty, that's Hawkins in motion. And Wilson on the roll. Let's see. Touchdown. Touchdown it is. And a discussion over at the uh, far side as Marcus Allen was able to uh, make the reception inbound. So the Raiders now trail 38 to 28. You'll notice that the Raiders don't make a lot of, of substitutions no matter how they stand, whether the game is in the balance or not. They have 11 guys, and they generally keep them all out there, win, lose, or draw. That's why you see number 32 in the ball game at this time. with 47 seconds remaining. Farr puts it through. The Seahawks now lead at 38 to 29. Well, do you think you can predict the next play? Do you think it'll be an onside kick? Nice, John. It would. Master the obvious. Only 47 seconds remaining of this fourth quarter. As uh, the Raiders uh, will looking at a five and two record following today's play and the Seahawks four up three down and that tightly contested AFC West. All right, there's the onside. Raiders pointing one way Seahawks the other. Raiders got it I believe. And we're down to 45 seconds remaining. Doki Williams able to cover up. So here's Mark Wilson back. I've seen I've seen some goofy things happen in this game in my life, but I I haven't. And Wilson looking to put it up. Doki Williams. Inside the 25. All right, easily on the tackle. Clock running though. These Raiders guys have one timeout left. These guys right now wish they'd hustled a little more, two, a little bit more, two minutes ago because they'd have a little bit more time left. They still have a timeout. They've got to score on this play. And Wilson going in zone. He did. Christensen. Beautiful catch by Todd. about fantastic finishes. We have 12 seconds remaining. Now they've got to really pull one out of their hat. They've got to make it. They have to get an onside kick, but they have to get one 25 yards down the field so they can kick a field goal, too. Todd Christensen with his third touchdown catch of the day. Let's take a look. Mark Wilson makes a beautiful throw right over the top of the linebacker. A perfect sink, but Christensen has had an outstanding individual effort. 11 receptions, three touchdowns, 152 yards. Uh, I don't think I've seen many of those in a losing effort. 22-yard pass play. And now Barr with the uh, point after attack. He's got it. It is a two-point Seahawk lead. 38 to 36. Well, you know, the Raiders were ahead by 15. All right, a couple weeks ago with with just a little over five minutes to go. They got the ball with seven minutes through a screen pass. I guess the Redskins did. We happened to do the game, and we had not said the game was over. This one appeared for all intents and purposes to be over with six or seven minutes to play. And I think the Raiders had already given up because had they not, they would have been a whole lot more uh, quick getting up on the ball, out of the huddle, doing the things they'd have to do. They've still got one timeout left, however. But they're going to have to kick it down the field far enough so that when they recover any sort of onside kick, they can then kick a field goal. This is one of the strange games of the season. You know, I, 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 I Excuse me, Mark. Uh, you said I made a statement that they'd have to kick it far enough. I don't think they've got enough time to get, get a recovery. All right. They don't have to call timeout. Clock won't start till they get the ball in motion if they recover it. 
Then they can go and get down to about the 30, 35 yard line with one throw, call timeout. And so there is some chance. Let's see. All right, here's Chris Barr getting set. And it's covered by Seattle. <laughs> Very protective. <laughs> That's right. That took a second, 11 seconds remaining. And it's the big backup tight end, Pete Metzelars, who was up as a, one of the short men on the recovery. Might take a half hour to recap uh, this one, looking at the uh, the scorecard will yep. be most interesting. One timeout apiece remaining. This but is the kind of game, if you're the quarterback, you don't do anything, you fall on the ball and let's get out of here. All right, and that is uh, what Jim Zorn does with some protection. And uh, yes, he would like to get out. Completed only four passes today, yet the Seahawks with 38 points on the day. Now the Raiders stop the clock using their final timeout with eight seconds remaining. Both sides will be ready in two weeks. They'll be playing down in the L.A. Coliseum, and there's a good chance it'll be for the league leadership. Uh, the Raiders are in a rut right now. They've, played, they've lost two of their last three, have not really played well in losing them, and uh, it's, it's regroup time for a team that started out faster than they've ever started out. So the L.A. Raiders coming in at five and one. Denver winning today. They're four and three. San Diego lost the three and four. Seattle looking at a four and three record. Kansas City three and four with the victory over the Giants. Seattle home for Pittsburgh next Sunday. While the Raiders play at Dallas next Sunday night. All right, here is Zorn again with protection. Holding on, and that will do it. Collective sighs of relief by the Seahawks and head coach Chuck Knox. As